Who do you think the most corrupt president in the Philippines? Now, I will show you the detailed data of all the presidents of the Philippines, starting from Marcos to the present. The reason why the other president is not involved is because they don't have any issues such as corruption and etc. I am not the one who will decide if who is the most corrupt and who is not corrupt president in our country. If my data is wrong, you can simply put your own statistics data below using our comment section and links is also allowed in this blog. I will also include all their achievements and legacies during their terms. President Ferdinand Idrilin Marcos, 20 years of service from 1965 to 1986. Total amount of money used during his term was 486,273 billion. His first term was marked with increased industrialization and the creation of solid infrastructure nationwide, such as the North Luzon Expressway and the Maharlika Highway. Marcos did this by appointing a cabinet composed mostly of technocrats and intellectuals, by increasing funding to the armed forces and mobilizing them to help in construction. Marcos also established schools and learning institutions nationwide more than of his predecessors combined. Marcos also sent 10,450 Filipino soldiers to Vietnam during his term under the Philcag or Philippine Civic Action Group. During the early years of martial law, the Philippine economy grew a significant amount spurred by heavy borrowing from na transnational banking companies and government-to-government -government loans. By 1980, However, the heavy burden of foreign debt servicing took its toll in the economy and mismanagement of important industries due to crony capitalism led by the economy to a downturn. The assassination of popular opposition leader Benigno Aquino in 1983 led to the pullout of foreign capital from the country, resulting in the negative GDP growth in 1983 and 1984. In 1976, President Marcos announced to the Filipino people his policy of establishing relations with communist countries such as the Peoples of Republic of China and the Soviet Union, June 2, 1976. Relations with the United States was modified. It was no longer based on the sentimental ties, but on mutual respect for each other's national interest. Thus, the military and economic agreements between U.S. and Philippines were amended to reflect this new relationship. In the amendments to the RPUS Military Bases Agreement of 1947, the U.S. acknowledged the sovereignty of the Philippines over the American military bases in the country. Subic and Clark. This bases would have a Filipino commander and would fly the Philippine flag. In addition, the U.S. agreed to pay rentals to the Philippines for the use of the bases. Marcos established closer ties with the Asian countries. The Philippines became a leading member of Third World, the collective name for the developing countries at that time. The Philippines actively participated in such world conference as the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development or UNCTAD meeting held in Nairobi, Kenya in 1976 and in the international meeting on cooperation and development held by the heads of 21 nations in Cancun, Mexico in 1981. Marcos took his oath of office on June 30, 1981 at the Luneta Park for a 60 year term ending in 1987. On the occasion, Marcos announced the establishment of a new Republic of the Philippines. Marcos completed power plants in 20 years. First, Bataan Nuclear Power Plant completed 1983. Leyte Geothermal Power Plant completed 1977. Makiling Benaho Geothermal Power Plant completed 1979. 
TV Geothermal Power Plant completed 1980. Angat Hydroelectric Power Plant completed in 1967. Kalayaan Hydroelectric Power Plant completed 1982. Magat B Hydro Hydroelectric Power Plant completed 1984. Pantambangan Hydroelectric Power Plant completed 1987. Agus 2 Hydroelectric Power Plant completed 1979. Agus 4 Hydroelectric Power Plant completed in 1985. Agus 5 Hydroelectric Power Plant completed in 1985. Agus 7 Hydroelectric Power Plant completed 1982. Pulangi Hydroelectric Power Plant completed 1985. Agus 6 Hydroelectric Power Plant recommissioned in 1977. Masiwai Hydroelectric Power Plant completed 1980. Main Magat Hydroelectric Power Plant completed 1983. Kalaka Coal Power Plant completed in 1984. Cebu Thermal Power Plant completed in 1981. Kalimpinan won Southern Negros the Thermal Production Field completed in 1983. Bridge projects where Marcus completed during his term. First, Biliran Bridge 150 meters long of Leyte completed 1975. Bonton Bridge 1,369 meters long of the Tugigaraw, Sulana, Cagayan, completed 1974. Kandapa Piedak, Pulilan, 5,000 meters long of Bulacan, San Simon, Pampanga, completed 1976. Mactan Mandawi Bridge, 864 meters long of Lapalapo, Mandawi, Cebu, 1972. Magapit Suspension Bridge, 449 meters long of Lalu, Cagayan, completed 1978. Mawu Bridge, 280 meters long, Victoria Northern Summer, completed 1970. Patapat, Viadak, 1,300 meters long, Pagudbud, Ilocos Norte, completed 1986. San Juan Bridge, 2,060 meters long Tacloban, Leyte, Santa Rita, Samar, completed 1973. Marcos established and founded state colleges, universities in 20 years. First, Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University in La Union, Mariano Marcos State University in Ilocos Norte, Kalinga Apayao State College in Tabuk, Kalinga, founded in 1970. Abra State Institute of Science and Technology in Abra founded in 1983. Pangasinan State University founded in 1979. University of Northern Philippines founded in 1965. Philippine State College of Aeronautics founded in 1969. Cagayan State University established in 1978. Quirino State University established 1976. Isabela State University established 1978. Pampanga Agricultural College established 1974. Mindoro State College of Agriculture and Technology, Kalapan City established 1966. Occidental Mindoro State College established 1966. Palawan State University established 1965. Bicol University established 1969. Camarines Sur Polytechnic Colleges established 1983. Rizal Technological University established 1969. Technological University of the Philippines established 1971. Apis State University 1980. Gimara State College founded 1968. Northern Negro State College of Science and Technology established in 1971. West Visayas State University became established as university in January 1986. Leyte Normal University 1976. SLSU or Southern Leyte State University founded in 1969. SLSU Hinunangan 1975, SLSU Tomas Opus February 1, 1986, SLSU Buntok 1983, SLSU San Juan 1983, 
Masilan State College, 1984. Western Mindanao State University became a university in 1978, followed with building and the satellite campuses in Western Mindanao State University, Alicia Campus, Sambuanga del Sur, WMSU, Aurora Campus, Sambuanga, Davao del Sur, WMSU, Kuruan, Sambuanga City, WMSU, Diplahan, Sambuanga City, WMSU, Emelda, Sambuanga, Sibugay, WMSU, Ipil, Sambuanga, Sibugay, WMSU, Mabuhay, Sambuanga, Sibugay, WMSU, Malangas, Sambuanga, Sibugay, WMSU, Mulabe, Sambuanga, Del Sur, WMSU, Naga, Sambuanga, Sibugay, WMSU, Lutanga, Sambuanga, Sibugay, WMSU, Pagadian City, Sambuanga, Del Sur, WMSU, Pitugo, Sambuanga, Del Sur, WMSU, San Ramon, Sambuanga, City, WMSU, CI, Sambuanga, Sibugay, WMSU, Tungawan, Sambuanga, Sibugay. Central Mindanao University, established 1965. Misamis Oriental State College of Agriculture and Technology, established in 1983, or Moscat. Northwestern Mindanao State College of Science and Technology, established in 1971. Davao del Norte School of Fisheries, established 1969 now known as Davao del Norte State College, Mati Community College or MCC founded in 1972, now known as Davao Oriental State College of Science and Technology, Malita Agribusiness and Marine Aquatic School of Technology founded in 1966, Southern Philippines Agribusiness and Marine and Aquatic School of Technology University of Southeastern Philippines established 1978 Cotabato Foundation College of Science and Technology established 1967 Cotabato City State Polytechnic College established in 1983 Mindanao State University Iligan City founded 1968 Mindanao State University Jensen City founded 1971 Surigao del Sur State University founded in 1982 Surigao del Norte School of Arts and Trades, founded in 1969, now known as Surigao State College of Technology. Sulu State College, founded in 1982. Tawitawi Regional Agriculture College, founded in 1975. Adyong Memorial Polytechnic State College, founded in 1970. That have found so far, out of 100 state universities and college are established, and accomplished projects of Ferdinand Edwin Marcos. Project accomplished and not just promised. Manila International Airport, LRT-1, first in Southeast Asia. Heart Center of the Philippines, Kidney Center of the Philippines. Nayong Filipino, Pataan Nuclear Power Plant. Coconut Palace, PICC, Philippines Lung Center. Film Center, Golden Mosque, for Muslims, Fox Arts Theater, SLEX and NLEX, first in Southeast Asia, Santa Barbara Project, the Classified Missile Project of the Philippines. During the time of the late President Ferdinand Edrelin Marcos, there was a classified project called Santa Barbara. Its aim primarily is to develop different types of missiles such as ground-to-air missile or GTAM or SAM, air-to-air and air-to-ground missile for a purpose of guarding and defending the country which is the Philippines. It will serve as an interceptor against incoming land, air and sea threats and if successful, the second plan is to mass-produce it to be exported to other country. A new missile called Bongbong-1 was first built. It was said to have a range of 12 kilometers. It was built and designed by the greatest Filipino minds in the field of science and aerospace engineering with the help of German engineers and scientists. These rockets were tested between 1972 and 1980s. During that time, China was still testing the DF-3 and the DF-4 and the DF-5. 
Since December 1972, a series of 37 dynamic tests had been conducted on the 180mm rocket. The project initiated by President Marcos also involved testing of other weapons and armaments. On September 1975, four Bong Bong rockets named after Marcos' son were successfully launched. Asked about why the country was experimenting in making its own ballistic missiles, President Marcos explained, The defense of the Philippines cannot be left to alliance with other countries. We must assume that there will be contingencies where even the United States may not be ready to come to our assistance. Unfortunately, after Marcos, it was a dead stick. It's a dead Santa Barbara project that is done just in the dust beans of history. Some critics are clamoring, asking to ban and stop the project. They said it was intended only for the development of nuclear weapons, so the bead was concealed by former President Corazon Aquino, the mother of former President Tony Aquino. Political and lawful, the current constitution forbids the use of keeping and nuclear weapons of the Philippines. A leak from our military insider that a team from the Armed Forces of the Philippines Weapons and Tactics, Department of Science and Technology Weapons Engineering Specialist, and Rafael Advanced Defense System of Israel, developer of Iron Dome, are working jointly to reopen and reactivate the late Santa Barbara project. According to our military source, the ongoing territorial threat between China and the Philippines are the main reason why the government worked to reactivate the project, likewise also to protect the help and the Philippines for its minimum and credible defense posture in guarding its territory. The project is now its final stage of planning and discussion. During Marcos' term, Philippines developed anti-typhoon rockets. In 1973, the Philippines already developed a missile system that can prevent incoming typhoon in the country. Under the leadership of late President Ferdinand Edralin Marcos, the program caused the fact that it was rain, weather stimulation, and modernization program, and is led by Colonel Ramon Macabuhay. The project is part of the government's rain, stimulation, and weather modernization program an ambitious plan to precipitate rainfall in drought-stricken areas and dissipate storm before they develop full-blown typhoons. Colonel Ramon Macabuhal, Chief of Air Staff and Director of the PAF Rainmaking Project, said rockets to be used in the trials are now being ready. Aircraft from which the rainmaking missiles will be launched are fired. Makaboy said firing the good seeding rockets from a distance will protect the pilot and the aircraft from the hazards of turbulence of storms clouds. In short, eliminate the need of flying the plane right into the teeth of the brewing typhoon. The rocket is similar to the ground-to-air missile used in warfare, but it, instead of an explosive warhead, it will have a wooden rocket head containing approximately half a pound of silver iodide. Armed Forces of the Philippines' Capability and Strength During Marcos' Regime The Philippines once possessed one of the strongest military forces in Asia that one can only imagine today. The Philippine Navy, Philippine Air Force, and Philippine Army were strongest military force the Philippines had during the Marcos administration. Since the eruption of Mount Pinatubo in 1991, where most of the PAF fighter jets were destroyed, the Philippine airspace remains unguarded until today. Let's take a look at the Philippines' major assets during the time of late President Ferdinand Adrian Marcos' administration. Philippine Navy High Endurance Cutters The Philippine Navy had four high endurance cutters armed with artilleries and heavy chain guns. All four were acquired on 1976 and were deployed on Philippine coast. BRP Andres Bonifacio, BRP Gregorio del Pilar, BRP Diego Silang, and BRP Francesco de Gohoy. Corvettes 
the Philippine Navy acquired three destroyer escorts during Marcos administration. BRP Raja Lacandula, BRP Dato Calantiao, and BRP Dato Sikatuna, BRP Dato Maricudo, and 56 meters Corvette was acquired during 1976 from the United States through South Vietnam. Maricudo was retired from service on December 9, 2010. Fleet Minesweeper BRP Dato Tupas was one of the only two fleet minesweepers in the history of the Philippines Navy. The other one was RPS Samar which was retired before the BRP Dato Tupas was acquired. There is no information about the fate of Dato Tupas after the EDSA revolution. Submarine Chasers Two submarine chaser boats were acquired during Marcos era. The BRP Nueva Vizcaya and the BRP Negros Occidental acquired in 1968 and 1976, respectively were high-speed patrol boats capable of chasing and destroying earlier submarines. Coastal Minesweepers There were two coastal acquired and in service during Marcos regime, the RPS Zambales and the RPS Zambuanga del Norte, both acquired in 1979. Mine sweepers. Two mine sweepers were acquired and put in active service on 1979, the RPS Davao del Norte and the RPS Davao del Sur. Amphibious warfare vessels. From 1969 to 1978, the Philippine Navy acquired at least 26 amphibious attack and support vessels of any size, and some of which are still in active military service. Hospital ship. Philippine Navy had one hospital ship acquired on 1975, the RPS Hospital ng Tulungan. There was no information on what happened to this ship. Supply ship BRP Mactan was acquired on March 1972 and retired from service in 2001. Repair ship Na Philippine Navy had one repair ship acquired on 1999 and decommissioned on June 2001 and specified number of tugboats and small patrol crafts were also acquired during the Marcos presidency. The Philippine airspace was well protected with the Philippine airports during the Marcos era. Philippine airports had 35 units of bogged F-8 Crusader and 37 unit North Troop F-5 Freedom Fighter. Most of these fighter jets were destroyed during the Pinatubo eruption and had never been replaced until the Pinoy administration ordered 12 units of FA-50 fighter jets from South Korea recently. Aside from the above squadrons of fighters, a number of fighter and attack helicopters, twinner, and cargo jets were acquired from 1966 to 1988. Other accomplishments of Ferdinand Marcos not mentioned. PNR Bicol Express Philippine General Hospital National Children's Hospital Palace in the Sky Tagaytay National Planetarium MTRCB NEDA Philippine Deposit Insurance Corporation or PDIC Presidential Decree Law of Ferdinand Marcos Philippine Overseas and Employment Administration TESTA SSS or Social Security System PAGASA PAGIBIG Fund or PAGIBIG NAWASA or the MWSS or Manila Water Sewerage System Death Penalty National Home Mortgage Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation or PAGCOR 13 Month Masagana 99 Nutriband Program Bliss Housing Projects Kadiwa Meralco Pagmamayari ng gobyerno noon. Petron. 
Philippine Airline and National Steel Corporation, ito ang mga malalaking kumpanya na ibinenta ng mga nagdaang administrasyon. President Cory Aquino, 6 years of service from 1986 to 1991. Total amount of money used during her term, 1,077,895 trillion pesos. Filipino politician who served as the 11th president of the Philippines, the first woman to hold that office, and the first female president in Asia. Aquino was the most prominent figure of the 1986 People Power Revolution, which toppled the 20-year authoritarian rule of President Ferdinand Marcos and restored democracy to the Philippines. She was named Time Magazine's Woman of the Year in 1986. She is the first president without any political experience as she had not held any other elective office. As President Aquino oversaw the promulgation of the 1987 Constitution, which limited the powers of the presidency and re-established the bicameral Congress. Her administration gave strong emphasis and concern for civil liberties and human rights, and on peace talk to resolve the ongoing communist insurgency and Islamist cessation movements. Her economic policies centered on restoring economic health and confidence and focused on creating a market-oriented and socially responsible economy. Aquino faced several COP attempts against her government and various natural calamities until the end of her term in 1992. Legacy, the first woman president of the Philippines. Currency, $1 is equal to 2761.61. Growth rate, 1986 to 1991, 3.33%. Agrarian reform, natural disasters and calamities, electrical power, greed, inadequacy. President Ramos, six years of service from 1992 to 1997. Total amount of money used during her term, 2,237,907 trillion. The presidency of Fidel V. Ramos spanned for six years from June 30, 1992 to June 30, 1998. At the time of his assumption into power, Fidel Ramos was the second oldest person following Soros Mania to become president of the Philippines at the age of 64. He is also the first protestant president of the country and the only Philippine officer in history to have held every rank in the Philippines military from second lieutenant to commander in chief. The first few years of his administration, 1992 to 1995, were characterized by economic boom, technological development, political stability, and efficient delivery of basic needs to the people. During his time, he advocated party platforms as outline and agenda for governance. As in his case, he was the first Christian Democrat to be elected in the country. Being the founder of the Kasi MD Christian Muslim Democrats Party, he was one of the most influential leaders and the unofficial spokesman of liberal democracy in Asia. The Philippine economy recovered dramatically during the years of 1993 between 1997. Ramos vigorously implemented a comprehensive social reform agenda that addressed the long-standing problem of poverty, jobs and livelihood, health, education and skills training, housing, environmental protection, children and the youth, the elderly and the handicapped, agrarian reform, and access to equal opportunity. The country's gross national product, or GNP, averaged 5% annually. Average income of the Filipino family grew larger during his administration than the preceding two decades. He pushed uh, the regulation of gay industries and the uh, liberalization of the economy. He encouraged the uh, privatization of public entities to include the modernization of public infrastructure through the expanded field operate transfer law. While communist insurgency dwindled to historic loss, he achieved a peace agreement with military rebels and the Sessionist Moro National Liberation Front 
for which he won for the Philippine the coveted 1997 UNESCO Peace Award. The first four Asians, Fidel V. Ramos is known as the centennial president, having planned and supervised the 100th anniversary of the country's declaration of independence from Spain on June 12, 1998. Legacy, major legislation signed, Republic Act 1953, the new central bank account, or the Republic Act 97653, the new central bank account, Republic Act number 7638, Characterized Charter of the Department of Energy, Republic of Number 7648 Electric Power Crisis Act, Republic Act Number 7832 Anti Electricity and Electric Transmission Client Materials, Republic Act Number 7881 Amended Certain Provisions, Republic Act Number 7905 Strengthened the Implementation of the CARP, Republic Act Number 8179, an act further liberalizing foreign investments, amending for the purpose Republic Act Number 7042, and for other purposes. Republic Act Number 8293, the Intellectual Property Code of the Philippines. Republic Act Number 8435, Agriculture and Fisheries Modernization. Republic Act Number 8532, Agrarian Reform Fund Bill provided an additional. 50 billion for CARP and extended its implementation for another 10 years. President Erap Estrada, three years of service from 1998 to 2001. No total amount used data. Estrada was elected president in 1998 with a wide margin of votes separating him from the other challengers and was sworn into the presidency of June 30, 1998. In 2000, he declared an all-out war against the Moro Islamic Liberation Front and captured its headquarters and other camps. However, allegation of corruption spawned an impeachment trial in the Senate, and in 2001, Swada was ousted by People Power II. After the prosecution walked out in the impeachment court, when the senator judges voted no in the opening of the second envelope, the EDSA II protest resulted from the concerted efforts of political business, military, and church elites who were displeased by Israel's policies that included removal of sovereign guarantees and government contracts. In October 2001, the Daily Tribune reported about elite plans to constitutionally oust President Estrada under Upland XLCs. Emil Horado of the Manila Standard reported as early as 1999 about a PR demolition work designed to embarrass Estrada by attributing to his administration all sorts of perceived faults and scams with the end in view of covering up anomalies and scams also committed during the Ramos administration. In 2007, Estrada was sentenced with a special division of the Sandigan Bayan to reclusión perpetua for the plunder of stealing $80 million from the government and was sentenced a lifetime in prison. That was later granted pardon by President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. He ran for president again in the 2010 presidential election but placed second behind Senator Benigno Aquino III. Legacy Era para sa Mahira Program War against the MILF Plunder cases guilty Corruption charges and impeachment Perjury case President Gloria Arroyo Nine years of service 2001 to 2010. No total amount used in data. The last quarter of 2000 up to the first week of January 2001 was a period of political and economic uncertainty for the Philippines. On January 16, 2001, the impeachment trial has also taken a new direction. Private prosecutors walked out of the trial when the Pro Estrada senators prevented the opening of the evidence, a brown envelope containing bank records allegedly owned by President Estrada. With the walkout, the impeachment trial was not completed and the Filipinos eventually took to the street to continue the claim of President Estrada resignation or resignation. From January 17 to 20, 2001, hundreds of thousands of Filipinos gathered of Epifanio de los Santos Avenue, EDSA, the site of the original People Power Revolution. The clamor for, for a change in the presidency gained momentum as various sectors of Philippine society, professionals, students, artists, politicians, leftist, and rightist groups joined what became known as EDSA II. 
Officials of administration, the armed forces of the Philippines, and the Philippine National Police also withdraw their support for President Estrada. Days after leaving Malacanang Palace, President Estrada lawyers questioned the legitimacy of Arroyo's presidency. Before the Supreme Court, he reiterated that he did not resign as president and that at most, Arroyo was just serving in an acting capacity. As a consequence, Estrada no longer enjoys immunity from charges being filed against him. In the last week of April 2001, the Sandigan Bayan ordered the arrest of Estrada and his son, Senator Jingo Estrada, for plunder charges. A few days later, Estrada's supporters protested his arrest, gathered at the Edsa Shrine, and staged what they called Edsa III, comparing their actions to the Papal Power Revolution in 1986 in January, 19, in January 2001. Thousands of protests demanded the release of Estrada. Eventually, they also called for the Oster of Arroyo and the raised statement of the former on May 1, 2001. They marched towards Malacanang to force Arroyo to give to their demands. Violence erupted when the protesters attempted to storm the presidential palace and the military and police were forced to use their arms to drive them back. Arroyo declared a state of rebellion because of the violence of prominent political personalities affiliated with Estrada were charged and arrested. The so-called Edsa III was the first serious political challenge to the Arroyo presidency. Arroyo, who earned a master's degree and doctorate in economics, made the Philippine economy the focus of her presidency. Annual economic growth in the Philippines averaged 4.5% during the Arroyo administration, expanding every quarter of her presidency. This is higher than in the administration of her three immediate predecessors, Corazon Aquino, Fidel Ramos, and Joseph Estrada. The Philippine economy grew in its fastest pace in three decades in 2007, with the real GDP growth exceeding 7%. The economy was one of the few to avoid contraction during the 2008 global financial crisis. Faring better than its regional peers due to minimal exposure to troubled international securities, lower, independent, lower dependence on exports, relatively resilient domestic consumption, large remittances from 4 to 5 million overseas Filipino workers and a growing business process outsourcing industry. Arroyo's handling of the economy has earned praise from former U.S. President Bill Clinton, who cited her tough decisions that put the Philippine economy back into shape. Despite his growth, the poverty rate remained stagnant due to the high population growth rate and an even distribution of income. A controversial expanded value-added tax Law, considered the centerpiece of the Arroyo administration economic reform agenda, was implemented in November 2005, aiming to complement revenue-raising efforts that could plug the country's large budget deficit. Her administration originally set a target to balance the national budget by 2010. The tax measures boosted confidence in the government's fiscal capacity and helped to strengthen the Philippine peso, making it East Asia best performing currency in 2005 to 2006. The peso strengthened by nearly 20% in 2007, making it by far Asia's best performing currency for the year. A fact attributed to a combination of increased remittances from overseas Filipino workers and a strong domestic economy. Early in her presidency, Arroyo implemented a controversial policy of holiday economics, adjusting holidays to form longer weekends with the purpose of boosting domestic tourism and allowing Filipinos more time with their families. Legacy Plunder Case Guilty People Power 2 Estrada Pardon Plunder Case Impeachment Complaints Martial Law Magindana Massacre State of Emergency Philippine Japan Trade Deal Charter Change NBN ZP Deal Scandal The Spratly Island Joint Exploration Agreement President Noine Aquino, four years of service, 2010 to 2014, more than one year remaining, trillions of peso yearly budget, trillions of peso yearly budget. Aquino is a fourth generation politician. His great grandfather, Sir Villano Miano Aquino, served as a delegate to the Malolos Congress. His grandfather, Benigno Aquino Sr., served as a Speaker of the House of Representatives of the Philippines. From 1943 to 1944, and his parents were President Corazon Aquino and Senator Benigno Nino Aquino Jr. Aquino is a member of the Liberal Party. 
in the Liberal Party, Aquino held various positions such as Secretary General and Vice President for Luzon. Aquino is the Chairman of the Liberal Party. Born in Manila, Aquino finished his Bachelor of Arts major in Economics from Ateneo de Manila University in 1981 and joined his family in their exiles in the United States shortly thereafter. He returned to the Philippines in 1983, shortly after the assassination of his father and held several positions working in the private sector. In 1998, he was elected to the House of Representatives as a representative of the 2nd District of Tarlac Province. He was subsequently re-elected to the House in 2001 and 2004. In 2007, having been barred from running for re-election to the House due to terms limits, he was elected to the Senate in the 4th Congress of the Philippines. Following the death of his mother on August 1, 2009, many people began calling on Aquino to run for president. On, on September 9, 2009, Aquino officially announced he would be a candidate in the 2010 presidential election held on May 10, 2010. On June 9, 2010, the Congress of the Philippines proclaimed Aquino the winner of the 2010 presidential election. On June 30, 2010, at the Quirino Grandstand in Rizal Park, Manila, Aquino was sworn into office as the 15th President of the Philippines succeeding Gloria Macapagal Arroyo by Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the Philippines, Conchita Carpio Morales. In 2013, time named him one of the 100 most influential people in the world. Legacy DAP PDAP Scam Charter Change Four Piece Pantawid Familia Filipino Program, Power Crisis, MRT Malfunction, Worst Airport na IA, MNLF Peace Process, Spratly Island, Sambuanga Siege, 222 deaths, include MNLF 183, Armed Forces of the Philippines, and the Police 25 and Civilian 12. Super Typhoon Yolanda, Hayan. 5,000 to 20,000 deaths. Manila hosted crisis, 9 deaths including the perpetrator. And modernization of AFP.